Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition, and in today's video, we are going to look at what happens when a, someone is on a carnivore diet, tries it for a long period of time, and does not see the benefits that they would like to see, but only when they introduce supplementation do they start seeing rapid health improvement. So the reason I'm making this video is because I think that supplements have been unnecessarily demonized, particularly in the animal-based or carnivore community. There is this idea that human beings do not require supplements or extra nutrients as long as they are eating a nutrient-dense diet. Now, whilst I do think this is plausible or possible in probably a large majority of people, there are certain subsections or a subset of the population who this simply does not apply to. I am 100% certain that there are certain people who require nutrients in higher doses than what you can obtain from food to be able to manage their health condition. Now, in this video, I'm going to be uh, presenting four very brief, very basic case studies of people who have come to me on a carnivore approach, some of them been on it for years, other people have been on it for a few months, who were not seeing the benefit that they wanted to see. Only when we added in supplementation did they start to see real health improvements and made rapid progress. So in this video, we are going to briefly look at four case examples of people who had tried many variations of the carnivore diet and had not seen the benefit that they had wanted to. It was only when we started adding in nutritional supplements, very targeted specific nutritional supplements, did they rapidly see improvements in their health. So to give a brief overview, case one is an individual who was on a strict carnival diet. She had done many variations. She saw a complete resolution in her chronic diarrhea within four to five days after using nutritional supplements. Case two, we have chronic fatigue syndrome, actually got worse on carnivore, and only when we added in supplements did they start to see drastic changes in their health. Case three was severe constipation and gut pain, which the person had initially gone on a carnivore diet to help with, but didn't see the improvement. It was only when we added in certain nutritional supplements that they started getting their bowel moving again. And finally, case four, a case where an individual saw some improvement on a carnivore diet with their skin health, but actually high dose nutritional supplements, high dose vitamins effectively resolved the issue within a month. So in a bit more depth, case one, this was a female in her mid 60s. She had a history of autoimmunity, chronic pain, and psychiatric disturbances, so chronic severe anxiety, kind of bipolar-like symptoms, and some depression. So she'd started carnivore two years prior to our consultation. She had seen an improvement in practically all of her autoimmune symptoms and her anxiety. So she was over the moon. However, the problem is, is that she developed chronic severe diarrhea. Now this was significantly affecting her quality of life um, because she was unable to effectively control her bowel habits. Um, this is a very real concern. Now, in her history, she had actually consulted with multiple specialists since going on this, because she'd suspected that she had um, a parasite or some kind of gut infection. She'd spent thousands with no benefit. She still had chronic diarrhea. Now, the practitioner that had originally put her on the carnivore diet had said that she was simply doing the diet wrong because the, the, the diarrhea should have gone away by now. So she came to see me and she told me this conundrum. Essentially, my primary concern was that chronic diarrhea can rapidly deplete the body of nutrients, essential minerals, vitamins, um, and other fat-soluble nutrients that we may be losing if we have chronic diarrhea. Just to let you know, this individual had tried many variations of the carnivore diet um, in fact, every single case we're going to talk about today has tried many variations on the carnivore diet with no benefit. So what did we do? Well, the initial thing that I recommended was three to four grams of ascorbic acid per day spread out throughout the day because I suspected that this may be an issue with oxidative stress going on in the intestines. Furthermore, I asked her to take one to two caps of a certain type of yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. Now, she got in contact with me over emails within the week. She told me that within four to five days, 
the diarrhea had completely disappeared. Now she thought that this was merely a coincidence, but what happened was, was that when she stopped taking the vitamin C, the diarrhea returned. When she started taking it again, the diarrhea went away. So she is currently still taking vitamin C. What I recommended was that she continue on this dose. She gradually wean it down until eventually she will not require it anymore when the redox balance in her gut, in her cells, um, has hopefully improved somewhat. Case two was a male mid thirties history of chronic GI issues, chronic fatigue syndrome, or it wasn't diagnosed, but he had many of the same symptoms, kind of strange neurological symptoms, dizziness, severe brain fog, poor memory, um, and, and depression and lack of motivation. So this individual had indeed spent thousands on specialists in the past, had focused on gut health, um, had tried many different approaches and had not seen the benefits that he wanted to see. So he had only been on a carnivore diet for two months when he'd seen me, but he had previously dabbled with some keto in the past as well. Um, when he got onto carnivore, unfortunately it actually made him worse. So his fatigue got significantly worse and so did his mental energy and his brain fog. When we initially had our consultation going through the case history, I suspected something called subclinical beriberi, which is essentially a long-term deficiency of vitamin B1. Now, he didn't agree with this. He thought that this was probably unlikely because this individual was eating lots of organ meats at the time. He had taken a multi-B complex in the past um, and had not seen much benefits, but um, he agreed to go along with the therapy that I was going to recommend. I recommended 300 milligrams of a specific form of thiamine, which is vitamin B1, and 400 milligrams of riboflavin. It's important to note that the recommended daily allowance for vitamin B1 is roughly one milligram. So we were recommending at least 300 times the RDA, okay? This is something that you simply cannot get from food. Um, and it is working, it's a super physiologic dose. It's something that you would never find in nature. Anyway, so within three to four days, this individual did get worse. Um, he got significantly more fatigued. Um, and this is a normal occurrence. This is something to expect when undertaking high dose vitamin supplementation. Now, after one week, symptom improvement by approximately 90%. So this individual was absolutely over the moon. Fortunately, this individual carried on supplementation, supplementing and he has made more progress in the past couple of months than he has done in years. In fact, he is now able to go out and exercise at the gym, which is something that he enjoys to do. Um, he has been moving, he, he has had energy. He says that his energy has almost returned back to normal before he initially got sick. And, and, and this was in a very, very, very short space of time, simply using vitamin B1, vitamin B2, and a multi-B complex. Um, now you may say this is simply coincidence, but I can assure you that it's not because it's something that we see very often when you use these kind of nutrients in practice. Case three is of a female in her early 30s. Now this was a very complex case. Um, a history of POTS, which is a autonomic nervous system dysfunction, chronic constipation, fibromyalgia, and fatigue. So she'd been on a carnivore diet for approximately one year, um, and she was hoping to address her constipation, so her chronic gut issues. Um, unfortunately, going on a carnivore diet did not help it. So it reduced the bloating, but it did not address the constipation. So what I did, uh, going through the, the, um, the case history, again, I suspected it was an issue related to vitamin B1. So we tried a very high dose of benfotiamine, which is a lipid soluble form of vitamin B1. We did uh, between 750 milligrams and 1000 milligrams per day, which is approximately 750 to 1000 times the RDA. Um, and we also used magnesium malate. Now, interestingly, within two days, she got in contact with me and told me that she'd been for a bowel movement without having to use a laxative. This continued to improve over the weeks with continued benfotiamine supplementation. When she removed benfotiamine, she found that she became constipated again. So what this, once more, this is demonstrate, demonstrative of a long-term chronic nutrient deficiency, which when it is addressed with nutritional supplementation, it can improve symptoms pretty quickly. Now, finally, 
Case four, this has to do with the skin. This is a male in his early 40s, a history of chronic psoriasis and seborrheic dermatitis, which is basically dry scaly skin on the face. Um, and so he'd been carnivore for approximately one year before coming to see me. He had seen some improvement with the psoriasis and with some of the other symptoms in terms of energy, uh, brain fog, and, and these kinds of things. However, he had still been suffering from this kind of scaly dermatitis on the face. And in some cases, it had actually gotten worse. So we'd gone through his clinical history. He had tried to eat lots of organ meats. He tried to eat egg yolks. He tried cutting out organ meats. He tried cutting out egg yolks. All of these different kinds of things. Nothing had improved. He was not eating dairy at the time. Um, he was on a very basic diet of basically just beef and water. Um, and so at that point, we, um, I, I recommended a very high dose biotin supplement, which is B7. Uh, at five to 10 milligrams per day, and a riboflavin three to 400 milligrams per day, along with a multi-B complex, which was quite high in B6. We, we didn't do any testing. This individual couldn't afford any testing, so this was merely guesswork, based on my understanding of skin issues. And essentially, at one month follow-up, he says that the, uh, the, the skin issue had practically cleared up completely. So. The key points from what basically the purpose of this video is, uh, the reason why I'm doing it, is each case that I've just spoken about included sufficient organ meats. They had previously eaten all, no organ meats. So they had gone uh, through various or multiple variations of the carnival or animal-based kind of approach using higher fat, using higher protein, using lots of organ meats, using egg yolks, not using egg yolks, not using organ meats. You know, they've been doing this, they tried various things, and in fact, nothing had helped. It was only when we used targeted nutritional supplementation that they saw the benefits that they wanted to originally see. So in defense of supplementation, in many cases of long-term chronic deficiencies, I do not believe that diet is sufficient. Individual nutrient requirements appear to differ in different health conditions. So if someone is relatively healthy, then by all means, they can probably eat a purely animal-based diet and get on just fine for their nutrient requirements. However, if we have an individual who is already in the, in, in the context or in the situation of a full-blown health condition, a chronic autoimmune condition, let's say, some other kind of health condition, which may increase their requirement for certain nutrients, or let's say that they had a chronic nutrient deficiency before undertaking the carnival diet, I, I am not convinced that we can address that purely through food. In fact, I'm fairly certain that in many cases, we need to use super physiologic doses in supplementation to improve that, to address that chronic nutrient deficiency. And so therefore, what I really employ people to do is not to adopt a dogmatic view of health and nutrition. There is no one size fits all. There is no yes or no or right or wrong in nutrition. There is individual context and individual requirements. And to flat out demonize supplements, I think is very short sighted as is, is, is potentially detrimental for many of the people who listen to this kind of advice and take it on religiously, because in fact, they could be doing themselves a disservice if they do have some kind of nutrient deficiency and do not address that. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my page. You can find me on EO Nutrition at Facebook. You can find me on www.eonutrition.co.uk. I do like to make more videos like this um, and I will be making more in the future. So if you like that stuff, as I said, follow me on social media, subscribe to my page. If you have any questions, drop me one in the comments or you can find my email below this video. Until next time, Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.